The day was the 29th of August 2018. No one could have guessed it, but what we witnessed was the beginning of something special. For the next 2.5 years, we would be following the journey of 12 wonderful girls. It wasn't clear yet what kind of path they were about to take, but whether you liked them or not, one thing's for sure, everyone was paying attention. The 29th of October 2018. That was the day of their debut, and I think it's safe to say that it was a successful one. The title La Vie en Rose instantly became a hit amongst fans and non-fans alike. If you didn't already know them before the debut, you probably did after. It wasn't as showy as other debuts that year, but it had something that made it stand out from the others. Which a good handful of people didn't really love, but it didn't matter, as this immediately became one of the top songs of that year. It's clear that it was a great start to their career. Some groups could only wish to reach this level of success, and they did it on their debut. The only challenge now is to continue what they've shown to the masses, continuing to improve and master their craft. They've set a standard for themselves to match, and all things considered, I think they did very well. <laughs> Just a few months after debut we got the sequel to their first album. La Vie and Rose introduced the girl's beautiful elegance. With gracious choreography and sophisticated vocals, we got a peek to their soon-to-be-known elegant concept. Here in Violetta, they made it even more apparent. It had a bigger energy, better production all throughout, and overall was a significant upgrade to their last one both title and album-wise. It was certainly less successful than La Vie and Rose was, as it didn't have that danceable hit K-pop sound the last one had. But that wasn't the purpose of this comeback. At that time it was near impossible for them to top such a big debut. It was either matching the same level or going completely downhill, no in between. But see the thing is, success wasn't their main goal. It was noticeable that the past two albums were connected somehow. There was a thematic element to both that wouldn't be fully explored and realized until the last album. So, for the next seven months, the girls have worked hard. They were slowly gaining fans, attending shows, doing other projects in that time span. For seven months they were molding what was said to be their biggest comeback yet. Exactly one year after their debut, they dropped the trailer for their first full album, Blue Eyes. This was it. This was the album to prove their worth as a K-pop group. The album that will separate them from the title of that one produced group. It was a steady ride for the whole year, and this album was going to be their shining moment. The producers of a famous audition show have been arrested for alleged vote rigging. The scandal has caused public outrage because it was the viewers who were supposed to choose the winner of the audition. An investigative committee comprising viewers has issued a statement demanding that CJ ENM, the organizer of this show, take responsibility for vote rigging. One of the worst things that anyone could have imagined happened. There was already speculations about these shows being manipulated. But I don't think anyone would have wanted that. Anyone related to that series became the punching bag of K-pop fans. But in all honesty, no one would be happy in this situation. Trust has been lost, and everyone must have felt conflicted inside. So for obvious reasons, the girls had to halt activities. And for the next three months, it was a total blackout. No updates. No anything. Just total silence. No one can predict what was bound to happen next. All we could do was hope and wait for any news. On the 6th of January of 2020, CJENM have finally made their statement regarding the plans for the two active produce groups. Unfortunately, the agencies of X1 members have announced that the group will be disbanding. The news wasn't so good for the other two. There were positive talks about bringing back the 12 girls together. But that still wasn't so sure, as it still could have gone another way. Three weeks later, we got the confirmation. They were expected to resume activities on the February of that year, and as a natural reaction from fans, we were all happy and excited. Absorbed by the moment, fans forgot about one thing. 
This comeback could easily make or break their career forever. The scandal never disappeared and was still one of the biggest scandals to ever break out. These 12 girls were the remains of that scandal, and the pressure was all in them. They were at the lowest point of their lives, and they had to come back with something larger than life. Something that could win everyone's hearts back. Because anything else would mean the end of their career. Now I'm crazy for you, crazy for me. Make my boy, yeah, chuck it, no bit. Crazy for you, crazy for me. I saw me. Not only did they need to outdo themselves with this comeback, but they also needed to pull off something that hasn't been done in K pop. I may be reaching, but I'm positive that everything they did with this album subverted anyone's expectations, and not in a way you'd think. There was nothing groundbreaking with the album, it's not like it contains 12 of the best songs in K-pop. What they did here was utilizing what they have and what they're good at, while also trying out something without detaching with their already established sound. It shows in the first track of the album. The song begins with a gentle melody that transitions into this darker and more mature tone. This intro track wonderfully sets the mood for the rest of the project. Whatever you felt in this 3 minute 37 second song will be the same for the next 11 tracks. This song goes to show that the girls were trying to present a different yet familiar side to them. The past albums perfectly displayed their youthful identity. They were still young, and had a lot more to encounter in their lives. And being young, you see the world a bit differently, which is the beauty of our youth. Yes, they were trying to show off their more mature sound, but their young selves never left them. Written by none other than their youngest member, Dreamlike is a song about your euphoric emotions. Or in their words, everything seen and felt promoting as 12 is like a dream, and this journey like time will continue forever. A good number of songs in this album were written and produced by the girls, which makes the album even more so meaningful. With this song probably being more than the others. Apart from being a ballad, this song was inspired by the story of fans who gained comfort from the girls, which in turn also consoled them. It holds the meaning of how they would like to repay the unlimited love their fans sends their way. <laughs> Sung beautifully by three of the members, they deliver a sincere voice that inspires the listener with encouraging lyrics. But the album doesn't only focus in deep messages. It does that while also trying to have fun. This next song Daydream is a 90s inspired dance pop track. Sung by members with a more mature vibe, these four capture the dreamy aura this song exudes. A song that expresses the feelings of a sweet day's nap, and the unwillingness to wake up from it. If you've been paying attention then you can tell that none of these songs sound the same. Each one has a unique trait to it, yet it still feels cohesive enough to be under the same record. Which is something this album exceeds at. Diversity. One thing that most groups struggle with a full album is diversity. They've either done the sound or is trying too hard to showcase something new. And this album doesn't suffer from that. But diversity doesn't really make an album, does it? It's just a factor that makes one great. And Blue Eyes has lots of it. Along with diversity, this next set of songs are something to consider when making a great K-pop album. <laughs> 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 
Normally when a group outdoes themselves, it's usually because they manage to do something different. Something that no one could have predicted. And surprisingly, that wasn't the case with this album. Yes it's something new, but in its core, it's still a K-pop album. And the following songs are exactly that. Just a bunch of K-pop songs. I'm talking girl crush, bubblegum pop, innocent pop, and literally anything that makes this genre go. The most fundamental K-pop sounds that every group has done. The very thing that any K-pop group should master. And these girls do it very well. The intense Moomba tune beat driven by the powerful vocals further amplifies the appeal of the song. This fully illustrates their confidence that will make anyone fall in love. This one was a fan favorite, and for obvious reasons. It was about time they tried a darker tone, and thankfully it was done well. They were always known for having a brighter image since a good majority of their members were young. With these next songs, it's shown that the image never really left them. In fact this next song was their brightest one yet. Bright was the term to describe their style because they typically were never considered as a cute group. They've done colorful, energetic, and upbeat music, but they weren't really focused on being cute. And that was the case, until this song came out. The track also adds a little bit of flavor to all the cuteness happening. It would sometimes break out of the bright mood and bring in a rap verse over a trap beat. The song goes in many directions, especially during the bridge, where instrumentally the song goes crazy and literally all over the place in a good way. I've listened to many many songs in my life, but this was one of the craziest ones I've ever heard. The brightness doesn't stop there. This next song isn't just a song, it's a lifestyle. This one is pure serotonin from start to finish. If you're having a bad day, I am convinced this song will make it better. Because this song is bubblegum pop perfection. The next song, Spaceship, is the mandatory fan service song that every K-pop group does. It's simple and straightforward. It combines the bright energy and refreshing voices that is unique to them. Written by their lovely leader, this song is and always will be for the fans. Much like a song from their previous album titled Airplane, this song brings both the fans and them together on a spaceship, to places even beyond our dreams. The girls never hid their love for their fans. At any given opportunity they try their best to show it, and we as their fans welcome it every time. Apart from this album being for the fans, this album was none other than for themselves. Just in their first year only, they've already experienced so much. Whether it be ups or downs, it was one eventful first year for them. In every single moment, there was always one thing present. In all those times of joy and hardships, they always had each other. Ooh, you and I. One thing that will forever be strong with these girls, and one reason why they did so well as a group, would be because of their bond. There is this strong friendship between these 12 girls that I can't really explain. Even when off stage you could clearly tell that they enjoy each other's company. And because of their fondness with one another, this made their group even more compelling. 
with participation from their member Minju, who expressed her feelings beautifully in the lyrics. The overwhelming emotions they have for each other can be felt in this track. <laughs> As an acoustic pop genre track, the song embodies a message of friendship. When the voice of all 12 members unite as one, a unified stage can be made. I do believe there was a reason why these 12 girls were brought together. Even for a short time, every single moment was well spent. It was never a coincidence. It was always their destiny. I don't know if any of y'all watch any anime, but this song really reminds me of one. Actually not just anime, but any kind of story in that matter. Specifically ones that revolve around a group of friends. One where they spend the rest of the series together, only to go their separate ways in the end. You probably know the reason why I brought such a specific plot up. There is always something bittersweet with these types of situation. The whole time we knew that this wouldn't last forever. One day all of it will be gone, and everyone will go down their own path. And all you can do by then is reminisce back on the memories you made together. As much as possible, when talking about this group I don't want to get all emotional and whatever. But ever since the day they got together and debuted, it was inevitable. Like I said, it's a bittersweet story. It was only joy and sadness that we would experience with these girls. Every single day we knew what was going to happen, and we just had to live with it. If you aren't crying already, here's a fun fact. When the members met for the first time, cherry blossoms were scattering beautifully in the air. And I don't know about you, but that fact makes this whole thing ten times sadder. The final song, Open Your Eyes, is the official grand closer to this album. Album sequencing in K-pop, for most of the time, isn't much of a big deal. That's because most listeners would only listen to the album's title, or just play the whole thing on shuffle. But albums like these are different, they deserve special treatment. This isn't merely a compilation of 12 songs, it's an album of experience. A story is being told here, so the order of songs should be done faithfully. This whole time I've been showing you an alternate version of the track list. Not to say the original was bad, but it was specifically made for casual listening. The original was meant to intrigue the listeners, by starting with the impressive intro track eyes, followed by the title track, then the bright songs, then to the sentimental ones, which all leads to this outro track. This is the formula most K-pop studio albums follow, and I see nothing wrong with that. But as I've established in this video, this whole album was more than that. 
It was more than just a playlist of songs. Yes I do believe the song is amazing as a closer, but I think one song deserves that spot more. The song is just a piece of the bigger picture. If you carefully think about it, this song sounds like the beginning more than the end. Like a beginning of a new era, a new age, a new journey to enter on. I think there's plenty of words in the dictionary that can perfectly describe this song. But nothing more meaningful than the title itself. Fiesta. If you don't already know, a fiesta is a celebration for something special. And that is exactly what this whole album was about. Like I've said in the beginning, if they were to come back even greater, it had to be something only they can do. The title track Fiesta, is a bold and glamorous expression of life through the comparison of festivals, depicting them as a group in their full bloom. The album expresses the 12 members at their peak beauty, who are ready to be in full bloom in various ways. This whole comeback was the culmination and the beginning of something beautiful. The girls in this coming of age story have bloomed into amazing artists. This album was personal yet perceptible. It was a K-pop album made to do a lot of things, and it succeeded doing so. This wasn't just any album, it was a spectacle, and one to be recognized in the many years to come. A blooming moment for them. One that would be etched in history, as the greatest K-pop album of all time. It's my fear.